Hi, my name is Brittany Camley. I'm reporting for KGFW, and we're here with... I'm Tommy Cash. Gee, Tommy, thanks for taking the time to do this interview with us. Well, you're more than welcome. It's a pleasure. Do you ever get nervous before going on the stage? Well, sometimes I do. You know, even though I've been singing 40 years, I, I still get a little bit nervous. Uh, it's called stage fright. And uh, if one of my family members is here, like my wife or my sister or a family member, I get even more nervous. But I get over it as soon as I start singing. I think I'm really on another say no. Well, that's okay. You know, uh, I was nervous too when I first started out. How has music affected your life? Well, music is my whole life most of the time. But I'm also in the real estate business, so trying to do uh, real estate uh, when I'm not on the road singing is uh, another pleasure in my life. I really enjoy real estate, but I'm mainly a country music singer and songwriter and music publisher, and that's what I enjoy most. How many instruments do you know how to play? Well, I only play guitar uh, very well, uh, or, or well enough to perform with it. I know a little bit about keyboards and a little bit about drums, but mainly guitar. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to learn how to play guitar? Yeah, the first thing you do is you buy a, a reasonably priced guitar. Don't buy a real expensive one because you might not want to stay with it. But if you do, then you can get an expensive guitar later on and find yourself a teacher, uh, an instructor who teaches guitar. And it costs maybe a few dollars every week or every two weeks. But, but start out with an instructor, and they'll teach you the basics of a guitar, and that's what you need to learn first. Who taught you how to play guitar? Well, I taught myself when I was 15, 16 years old. Uh, my famous brother was always leaving one of his guitars laying around, so I picked it up and started plunking on it. And I guess by the time I was 18, I could play and sing whatever song I wanted to sing. Do you have any fond memories of your new brother? Oh, of course. I have many, many fond memories of, of my brother. And uh, he was eight and a half years older than me. Some of them are, are family memories, and some of them are performing on stage together and recording in the studio together, and mainly just uh, being uh, brothers, you know. And uh, the world looks upon Johnny Cash as the superstar who... Uh, you know, became so popular that everybody recognized his face, but to me, he was just my big brother. What are you guys like in elementary school? Oh, we were just normal kids, you know. We grew up on the farm in northeast Arkansas, about 40 miles from Memphis. We were just farm kids. Our daddy was a cotton farmer, and uh, there, was, there were seven of us, so we had a lot of family activities that were a lot of fun. Some of the music out there today is kind of questionable. Do you have an opinion on it? Well, you know, Brittany, I like all kinds of music. I like country music and gospel music and popular music and classical music. Uh, and I like some of the uh, rap music. Some of it I don't understand the words, and uh, I don't like to hear dirty words sung in a song. And I really don't like, I really don't think it's appropriate for people to use curse words and vulgarity in music. Uh, music is for entertaining, not for the shock value that some artists might want to put into their songs with uh, words that really don't belong in music. But I like all kinds of music, but mainly I like country music because I'm a country music singer. One of the biggest influences for you in country music? Well, it's people you probably don't remember or haven't heard of because you're so young, but there was a great singer named Marty Robbins, and uh, I uh, really loved his voice, and another singer named, named Merle Haggard. I loved his voice, and I still do, and I, I love his music. And, of course, my brother. Uh, was a big influence on me, but Marty Robbins and George Jones and Tom T. Hall and some of those uh, guys that I've been friends with for 40 years or more are, are were big influences on me. When people look at your career, how would you like to be remembered? When people look at my career, how would I like to be remembered? I would like to be remembered as someone who sung good songs, uh, had a good attitude and always tried to smile and and do something for others, not just for myself, and uh, someone who really tried hard to be uh, some, someone that mattered, someone that mattered. Uh, I want people, when they see my show and hear me sing and talk, I also make speeches at various organizations. I want them to think that I had something to contribute. 
That pretty much wraps up our interview. Is there anything else you wanted to share with us? Well, I just want to say that I'm really proud of you for learning how to hold that microphone and ask questions, and that inspires me to see children doing things today and, and, and heading in the right direction. So thank you very much for interviewing me, and it's nice to meet you, Brittany. Thank you very much, Tommy. You're welcome. This is Mariah Schwecki reporting for KGFW, and I am with... And I'm Stan Helt. You're interviewing me today about the big show, right? How do you set up a night like tonight? Well, setting up a show like tonight is actually pretty easy. We have a booking agent that we know down in Nashville, and we give her a call and say, hey, we need a country star up here, and we're looking for somebody like Tommy Cash or Jack Green or someone like that. And she'll say, okay, let me get, put some feelers out, and I'll, get, I'll give you a call back. What singers do you like? Which singers do I like? Oh, man, I, I enjoy country music because that's usually what we get up here is good country stars. When you were in elementary school, who did you really look up to? Oh, man, that's a tough one because I was in elementary school a long time ago. In fact, I think you might even, it might even been in the late 50s when I was in elementary school. I guess maybe at that time I looked up to my mom more than anyone else. Have you ever had to... Have I ever had to... Deal with news reporters? No, you, you by, by far are the youngest crew that I've ever had to deal with. So, But you're doing a good job. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us before the concert resumes? Well, <coughs> I, was, uh, I was a little leery when I got the phone call. Uh, about uh, doing this interview with, with Mr. Cash, especially when I was told that it might be, oh, 9, 10, 11 year olds. But then I went to work and I thought about what would Tommy say? He'd say this might be the right thing to do. So I went along with that feeling and, uh, and he went along with it also. So and I, I think he thoroughly enjoyed it and I thoroughly enjoy it. I, I hope you guys. Uh, really get something out of this, that it's a, a joyful night for you. That should wrap it up. Thank you. This is Mariah Schwecki reporting for KGFW, and I am with Terry Nord. Terry, I have noticed that you are very talented w with the keyboard. Can you tell us about our sk your skills? Well, I started lessons when I was about your age. I was about 10 years old, and I started taking piano lessons. I graduated to an accordion, and I played that for a lot of years. And then I realized you didn't have to do that, so I quit. <laughs> and then I started playing keyboards like I do now, and I play uh, a Roland keyboard, but it's a Roland synthesizer that you can write, you know, you can write your own programs and that kind of thing. So I developed a steel guitar on there. So a lot of what you heard me play in the show was steel guitar, and then of course I played piano rhythm for Tommy Cash. I have a recording studio at home, and so we get to do a lot of recordings for people, and, and a lot of it is to learn to how the instruments are played. Even if you're not playing the instrument, you have to learn how they're played, what they sound like when they're played. Then you can kind of duplicate it on a keyboard, and that's kind of the way I do it. What has been one of the biggest challenges for you in learning how to play an instrument? Well, I think one of the biggest challenges, I suppose, is, is uh, oh, boy, that's a good question. Um, I thought I had an easy answer. <laughs> Well, I think the biggest challenge for me, and it isn't necessarily a keyboard related thing, but just learning the music. If somebody comes to me and has a piece of music they want me to play, I can't read music and so I have to learn it by listening to it. And that's probably the biggest challenge is to, to listen to the music and be able to play what I hear. Do you enjoy playing music? I think music is the best thing in the world. You, and, and you know, I don't know if you have 
something you enjoy doing? I don't know if it's music or if it's, or if it's, uh, if you like to draw or if you got some, you know, some sewing or something that you like to do. But art, no matter what it is, is the best thing in the world. If it's something you enjoy doing, and I've enjoyed music since I was a little kid, and uh, since I knew what music was, I've loved music, and and that's been my whole life. And and to be able to do it as a career is just absolutely wonderful. I have I have to tell you a quick little story. I had a foster son for a while, and he said to me one day, he said, Dad. He said, I don't think you have blood in your, in your veins. And I said, what? He said, I don't think you have blood in your veins. I think you've got music. He said, I think if you poked yourself, music would come out. <laughs> because, and he said, one of the things that he said to me, and it'll stick, to me, stick with me the rest of my life, he said, you know, he said, I've never seen anybody have such a passion for something as much as you do for music and he said I wish someday I can have that much passion for something so if you got if you love to do something do it until you do it well and that's what's gonna make you happy you do it to the best of your ability and you'll 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 be happy the rest of your life did I hear you say that you can read in Braille yes I do I read Braille I, I have a little machine up there I, I should have brought it down. I didn't know you were going to do an interview. I didn't know you were going to make me famous. But anyway. <laughs> oh, there it is. Can you tell us a little bit about this device? Well, you're familiar with laptop computers. This is equivalent to a, a laptop. It's, it, it doesn't have a hard drive in it, but it's got a ton of memory. And it, uh, it also has a, a modem in it, so I can hook it up to a phone line and I can get email if I want to. Uh, it's got uh, all all kinds of features. It's got a, a word processor in it, and it's got a, all you know a, a scheduler, so I can keep uh, you know track of my dates that I have to do things and that kind of thing. It's got address book, so I can I can write people's names, addresses, and phone numbers, and email addresses, and all that kind of stuff. And it's and what this is that came up first right here is. Tommy Cash's, part of Tommy Cash's list of songs that I couldn't keep up with. <laughs> and, uh, and Braille, Braille is six dots. There's six dots in a Braille cell. And you've got three down each side. And that's why you've only really got these three keys and these three keys. This is a space bar. This is an enter key, just like on your computer. And this is a backspace key. And that's all you need when you're doing braille and you can you can do anything you know you can write anything you want to write that you would write in you know uh, in handwriting or or on the computer you can do anything like that in braille just with these few keys a guy by the name of Louis Braille came up with that idea and Louis Braille would never believe the stuff that like this that's out today pretty cool <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to say just that it was really fun to talk to you. Thanks for the interview. Oh, you betcha, kiddo. Thank you very much. <laughs> Elvis has left the building. <laughs> this is Kale Sark with support for KGFW. And today we are going to visit the Gim Fire Department. Hi, this is Kale Sark with support for KGFW. And this is... Steve Klukas. What's your posi position in the fire department? I am the fire chief. What does the fire chief all have to do? Well, you basically take care of a lot of the administrative things of the fire department, plus oversee all the uh, calls, etc., and uh, also uh, anything that's, uh, when you're on a scene, you have the decisions to make as far as what's to be done. Are there a lot of calls a day? Uh, we basically have, fire calls will average somewhere between 15 to 25 for the year, and uh, are we also take all first uh, response calls with the medical so that entails about 70 calls so the total will be about uh, right around 90 between the two for the year how long have you been working here I've been with the fire department this is my uh, 24th year do you ever get scared and nervous on calls well you always wonder you know well, you always uh, get a little nervous when you know there's a 
when you're going to a call and you know there's kids there, it seems like that makes you just a little bit more nervous than you normally would. Uh, also, depending on what's at the site, such as a lot of fuel or things like this, also, uh, you know, takes into consideration a lot of uh, what goes through your mind. As you're going out to a call, you're usually thinking ahead everything possible that you need to do when you get there. So you really don't have a lot of time to think about being afraid. It's just what you're hoping to find or what you're hoping not to find. So, What encouraged you to start working at the fire department? Well, basically, I, was, I really didn't have any thoughts one way or the other about the fire department. I was just asked at one time by the, at then time, fire chief Merlin Sabo if I would be interested in joining. And uh, I guess that was, I never thought about it at all up until that point. And I decided, well, maybe it would be, you know, worthwhile or a good experience. And I guess I did, so. Did you start out as just a plain fireman? Oh yes, everybody does. You, you don't jump into a position of any type, so you all, everybody starts out the same and when you're on the scene, uh, the officers make decisions, but still on the other hand, you still, you all basically are there for the same goal and you work together. Can we get a quick little tour of the department? We certainly can. This is Dylan Chilmofenig reporting for KGFW and this, and we're in the fire station. Steve, do you do you want to tell us about the things behind us? Sure, be glad to. Okay, basically go through just uh, the uh, gear of one of the firefighters here. This one uh, here happens to belong to Jim Evenson. And uh, this is the helmet. And basically you have a, a face shield that slips down over to protect the eyes somewhat from anything that's flying at the time. And you have an insulated liner on the helmet and also basically for anything that falls you're basically protected there too helmet is probably one of the number one items right there this is a Nomax hood it's a uh, hood that protects you it, it goes over your goes over your face I can put it on for you for just a second and it goes down like this so it protects all the areas inside from heat as you're as you're working along and uh, that goes underneath before you put your helmet on, of course. Below that, you have the, the regular the uh, fireman's coat, which gets put on. It has uh, layers, uh, three different layers of uh, uh, thermal protection here, so you can avoid the heat that's when you're fighting a fire. And also, it works the other way as far as keeping the cold out when you're out there and you don't have enough heat to get, keep you uh, going either. Then we have the uh, boots and uh, pants, and these are made so you just jump into the boots and uh, one foot each, and they're made so the pants will slide up, your suspenders go over you, and you zip it up. So you should be able to get all your stuff on in roughly right around 20 to 22 seconds, and that gives you time to get here, get on the truck. So. We can usually, when we get here to the station, the first truck usually is leaving in probably about a minute and a half. That's pretty fast. I've got, my father works here. I know where his locker is, his locker is in this area. Would you like to try that on? Sure. There you go. Yeah, don't let them tip over. Yeah. You'll never get them up again. This is Angelica Munoz and Steve, can you tell us about your trucks? Okay, we've got uh, two main pumper trucks that go out to every fire. That uh, Basically, the one to your left over here is a two, the year 2003. The one behind it here is a 1996. And those are the relatively very new for a rural department and uh, they go to all the fires. The next door we have a, uh, a tanker that holds 3,000 gallons of water and uh, that goes to majority of the fires out in the rural area. And besides that we have what's called our rescue van which uh, is something that we take to all calls for carrying personnel and for all our medical gear. 
And in the other room be behind that, we have what's called a grass rig that we use out in the fields for corn fields, grass fires, etc. So that's basically what our trucks all entail. We have one behind us here, which is a uh, 1958 pumper, which we do still keep uh, occasionally for a backup if we need to. Can we look inside of the one of the trucks? We certainly can. This is the uh, generator. Both trucks have a generator. What this does, it runs our lights and uh, all our other electrical equipment on the truck when the other the other truck is basically just sitting and pumping. This is where all the uh, things like in, if we need to plug in power cords, we can have everything run from here. So that's, both trucks have a generator. In here, we have uh, shelves where we carry equipment. These are all absorbent uh, pads for uh, oil and fuel and things like that that gets spilled on a highway scene etc and then we have uh, salvage tarps or covers that we use for covering things in a house when we're going in to keep the water damage from a minimum okay we've got all the we've got all the controls up on top this is what's called a midship control the person running the pumps and everything can see what's going on you stand up here and uh, you know basically everything here has a you see these are all labeled this is a number four discharge that's a hose what you do is when anybody is calling for water they'll tell you which line and then these are the levers that get pulled back you, you screw them back and then they get pulled down into this position I don't dare do it now or we'll get water in our trap thanks for the interview and tour today Steve you're very welcome, and I'm glad you could come up and see everything. Tell the fireman, thank you for all the things they do. I certainly will convey that. Thank you. This is Larry Mashuga, and we are at the Kitchen Country the Gibbon kin Kitchen. <laughs> this is Larry Mashuga at the Gibbon Country Kitchen pi pi Pizzeria Pro. And I am with Linda. Can you tell us the first step of making a pizza? Well, the first step, we want to wash our hands and put on our food handler gloves. We got some helpers to make the pizza. Is that all right? Yeah, that's wonderful. Right now, everybody's putting gloves on to help keep their hands clean. Linda, could you tell us the next step in making a pizza? Sure. The next step is our screen where we put the crust on. We have to spray that with oil so that the crust won't stick to the screen. And then we'll put our crust on. Good job, Carol. I can hardly wait. Right. You have some crust ready? Crust ready. You just kind of want to come up to the edge with the crust. Does it get warm back here? Yes, it gets very warm back here. And you don't don't want to push it into the screen so it don't stick. You just kind of want to stretch it and all of the toppings. We usually put it on in the middle of the pizza. And then what I like to do is take a spoon and just kind of work it out to the edge. Um, Why do you have to spread it out in the middle? Like, make it soft. Just so that the whole pizza kind of gets evenly with, with the sauce. Linda, what's the next step? Next, we got to decide what type of pizza we want. Laura, what kind do you want? Cheese. Carol, what kind do you want? Cheese. Brittany, what kind do you want? Cheese. Dylan, have you ever had this kind of pizza before? Yes, I have. Is it good? Yes, very good. What's your favorite kind? I prefer cheese. I like pepperoni. Well, if we get two or a half, well, then we'll both get what we like. Yeah. Larry, what kind do you want? Uh, green peppers. And I want pepperoni. Is pepperoni all right with you guys? No. How about just a little bit of pepperoni on one part? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I guess me. that's okay. Bye. Where do you keep all your toppings? We keep all of our toppings in this cooler. Actually, we got them in the freezer, too. And then when this runs low, then we restock it. And what's the next stage? The next stage, we'll put the cheese on. So who's going to put the cheese on? 
it looks like we're almost done. Yep. How yep. much cheese do you generally put on each pizza? On the large, we put three cups on. Okay. Laurel, is it hard putting the cheese on? Yeah, when it's around the edge. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Okay, Linda, do we need someone to put the pizza in the oven? Yep. Yep, well, I need someone to put the pizza in the oven. How about Brittany? What kind of oven is it? It's a Lincoln, Lincoln oven, and it's a conveyor, conveyor style. It'll convey on a conveyor belt the pizza through the oven. Is it up right if we get a table ready to eat? Yep. Linda, I can hardly wait to eat this pizza. What's the next stop? Well, we put it on the tray, serving tray, and we cut it. Do you cut it any special way? We cut ours here in squares. I can't wait to eat it. Yummy, yummy. Is that the last stop? Pretty close, last step. You gotta eat it. I can help you with that. I'm gonna go tell everybody that's coming. Linda, we want to thank you for taking time out of your day to help us with this video. Oh, you sure? You guys are sure welcome. We'll be sure to tell all our friends about this place. Okay, thank you. And we'll try to help you clean up a little too.